Good evening all and welcome. Tonight I have a truly foul collection of poop stories for you to listen to. The perfect way to end April Fool's Day. Don't worry, there'll be a regular video tomorrow. But for now, why don't we finish off with a laugh and let the brownness take control. I am a pilot, and while looking out of the window of the plane I was going to fly, I noticed an incident I can't get out of my mind. You must understand that the toilets are drained by what we call the lav trucks. They open a porthole, usually towards the back of the plane, and start flushing out the contents. This is only done on successive flights, and not every single one. Well, for whatever reason, perhaps the agent was distracted, he did not secure the pipe properly to the porthole. Keep in mind, he's only a few feet away from said porthole when he turns on the vacuum. It is at that very moment he realized his costly mistake when the pipe shoots out and the agent was doused in the unholy source of a thousand anuses. It was a sight and smell to behold. Of course, he was immediately sent off, and I have no idea where the heck he would even go, as the airport didn't even have a sort of shower, only eye wash stations. Needless to say, no one really wanted to go near him, but they had to try and help him, obviously. It is a very painful memory, and yet comedic, but perhaps not for the guy it happened to. For the past day, I've been mildly constipated, little bits here and there, but I have managed to go a little. So my date asked me if I'd meet him for dinner at this place he's been telling me about for months. I make the trek over, wearing this cute dress and leggings. Dinner is great. I'm having a lot of fun. And as I'm finishing my ice cream, I had a sudden pain in my stomach and my body went from normal to, oh my god, I have to go now. I sat there in mild discomfort trying to hold it back long enough for me to get to the bathroom. Finally, I think the bad part is done and start heading back to the bathroom. When I see a waitress and ask her where the bathroom is, and she points me in the right direction when boom, I feel it. Things were happening in my pants and I really had to play it off. Thank God I was wearing a dress and leggings. I do my best to casually power walk to the bathroom while continually crapping myself. As soon as I enter the bathroom, I literally run at the handicap stall. I know it's bad. This is bad. I start trying to undress. My top in fear of getting it on the dress, but I was in too deep. I needed to get these pants off. It was still happening. So I pulled down my pants, spanks, and panties off to see the wreckage. In the process of this, a large wet blob lands on the floor. I now know it's all over the toilet seat and all over me. I'm panicking. I have to do this as fast as possible as to not draw suspicion from my date. This becomes slightly problematic when some teenage girls come into the bathroom and begin to gag at the smell and giggle, Ew! and then leave. Thank you. I get my pants off, trying not to have to touch the spanks and panties which caught the most of it. I slightly fail, but all of it that got on the pants was inside the pants and just some areas down the leg. I get the spanks and panties off and drop it in the ever so convenient trash can beside me. In the wake of this, there is still a blob of poop on the floor. The toilet seat is covered in poo smears and there was poo on my leg from having to pull the pants down, and obviously my lady bits and bum. I do my best to clean this off as quickly as I can, only using toilet paper. These are literally my only options. I get my leggings back on with the poo still on the inside. Seriously, there was nothing else I could do. I turn to flush, and it doesn't. Not one bit. I needed to get out of there before someone else came in. Thankfully, the bathroom was empty, and the only move I could think of at that moment to rectify the situation was taking the out-of-order sign from another bathroom and putting it on the stall that I was leaving in such a mess. To the restaurant, 
I am so, so sorry. I was mortified. I quickly scrubbed my hands and arms clean, took a deep breath and casually left. My estimate time was under 10 minutes, I think. My date just asked me if I felt better and I played it off. He didn't know of my grossness, naked feelings under my leggings. We embraced and made plans to see each other next weekend. He didn't know. He will never know of what transpired in my 10 mortifying minutes of agony. I then had to drive home for 30 minutes in this feeling of indescribable shame. I couldn't help but feel sorry for the restaurant. I went out with this girl. It was our second date. The first one was just drinks. We went out to Boston's Pizza, a generic Canadian sports bar chain, and everything went well, as she invites me back to her place afterwards. We get back to her place and start watching Netflix on the couch and begin to make out when all of a sudden, the food I had at dinner isn't sitting right. I try to soldier on through it, but the feeling was becoming unbearable. I needed a bathroom. I ask her where her bathroom is and she told me it was upstairs. So I make my way up and just destroy the toilet. Good thing it was upstairs away from her because it sounded like a Michael Bay movie. I finally think I'm out of the woods when I go to flush, but I'm not. I had clogged her toilet. I desperately look around it for a plunger, but she doesn't have one. Panicked, I didn't know what to do. So I quietly snuck down the stairs, grabbed my coat, put my shoes on, and left without another word. She messaged me an hour later asking what had happened, where I'd gone. I told her I just didn't feel well and never saw or messaged her again. This happened to us in Japan when we were walking around Aogigahara Forest. This is the notorious suicide forest and it's a very spooky place even in the daytime. We were there in the middle of a weekday at the trail of a tourist season, so there was no one else around, and once we got into the forest proper, we followed the guide lines and stuck to the tracks, as the terrain is very rough and there are various fissures in the mossy ground. In spite of this, we became turned around in the place quite quickly, and it was difficult to have a clear sense of where things are in relation to one another. This combined with the particular quiet added to the oppressive atmosphere of a place you know is a hotspot for people taking their own lives. We learned that folks looking to off themselves often leave their shoes or other belongings neatly beside the path before wandering into the woods to meet their fate. With this in mind, we were keeping a lookout for any such things just in case. Lo and behold, we came around a corner, and there, two meters or so from the path, was a neatly folded jacket sat in the low vegetation by the path. It looked clean and dry, and like it had been left on purpose, but not in a way to attract people to it, say, if it had been lost. My then girlfriend and I looked to one another in shock as we contemplated the implications of the situation. After a few moments, we both realized that the near silence we had been enduring was lessened on the account of the tremendous buzzing of flies. We saw the air was thick with them, and they appeared to be very interested in the abandoned jacket. At some point we assumed that something foul had happened in or around the area, and that someone might need help. After a moment of discussion, I volunteered with an elbow to the ribs to approach the jacket and inspect it for signs of foul play or evidence that might lead us to a poor soul in need. As I stepped into the bushes and I got close to the jacket, I could see clearly that the flies were emerging from beneath the garment and there were a multitude of them. I had a really bad feeling but pushed forward and resolved to lift the jacket up and see what grisly token might await beneath it. I bent down and seized the corner of the garment between finger and thumb and cast it aside with a flourish. Immediately, a nauseating odour hit me and I had to take a step back to stifle the fast-rising gip. There under the jacket, 
glistening in the dappled light of the forest was the single largest human turd I have ever seen. A single unbroken length of scat coiled pretzel-like and studded with flies busily making a brunch of it. Of course the tension broke as I scampered back to report my findings, confident that no one was in immediate peril, although a trip to the gastroenterologist might have been prudent. We continued on our walk without further incident. What made me laugh was the thought of some poor local tourist caught short in the forest and having to wade into the bushes to crimp off like a bear. Thereafter so ashamed by the size and countenance of the stool, they deemed it necessary to cover it with their perfectly good jacket, neatly folded to shield it, and I guess prevent shame being brought upon them and their ancestors for angering the forest spirits. I woke up one night while camping for the call of nature, and took an absolute epic dump the kind that ballads will be passed on through the generations about. We had roughly camped in just sleeping bags 50 yards or so off the trail, and I thought I went the other way, but I had unknowingly crapped right in the middle of the trail in the fog of sleep I was in. We woke up to fellow hikers walking and speaking in hushed tones about the kind of degenerates that would do such a thing, while also admiring the length and girth of my substantial turd, I did later move and bury it. Sorry. It was four days before Christmas, and I got to work around 6pm, as I was going to be an extra manager until the store closed and then I would work my freight shift. This store is always busy, so it's no surprise especially because it's packed to the gills at the moment. I don't even bother touching the Christmas section, nor do I go to the candy area because the line was weaving through it. So I go to the area that has makeup and t-shirts, fashion purses, etc. and begin to fold. Immediately I notice a foul smell and wonder if someone has dropped a dirty diaper and kicked it under the cube. But this soon proves false as a woman cautiously approaches me. Um... Excuse me, I think you may need to call an ambulance. That, that, that woman over there? She points to the wall where the fleece pyjama pants are hanging. I think she's vomiting, uh, feces. Merry Christmas to me. I weave through the racks, and there's a woman sitting on the shelf at the base of the wall, sure enough with crap smeared on her hands and face. Another woman next to her is impassively texting someone and telling the woman to stop. It turns out this woman has some kind of mental deficit, and I suppose that the overwhelming number of people swarming around her had caused her to have a breakdown. Okay, fabulous. I grab the store manager, and she recoils while she shoves the store phone into my hands, telling me I'm on my own as she jumps on the register. As I'm talking to the dispatcher and giving her the information she requested, I realize with absolute horror that the woman was digging in her diaper and eating the feces. Now, as it's the Christmas crunch, very few people are actually concerned with what was occurring, carry on shopping, and are continuously being shepherded away from the biohazard. They barely react when the ambulance comes to take the woman and her very unhelpful guardians and they don't bat an eye when I look at the responding officer and head paramedic in tears from the exhaustion and ask, Are you going to clean up? Nope, sorry. But at least the other paramedic kindly grabbed the solid crap that was on the floor as they strapped the woman on the gurney. I suck in a breath and being incredibly careful as I tread around surveyed the damage. It was abundantly clear with the fixtures moved what had taken the brunt. I nod to myself, block off the area as best I can and tell my manager to go to the men's restroom, fill up the mop bucket with the hottest water the tap will give. And I mention at this point, I'm only wearing my socks, having left my sneakers in the blocked off area so I wouldn't potentially track anything and step into a small puddle of salt laden water from a customer's shoe. I cringe but it's better than poop. The line has finally gone down enough 
that my angel of a cashier can come over and ask me if I needed anything. Beside a new job? Yes. Please grab me three trash bags, two pairs of gloves. She dashes off as the store manager pops up again. You're on your own, she says, and she's gagging. Ashley, if you puke on top of what I'm already cleaning up, I will beat you with this mop. And she dashes back to our office to call the district manager and make the report. For an hour and a half, not making a single facial expression, I threw away around 30 pairs of pyjama pants, shoes, purses, earrings and hangers that had been ruined without bothering to damage them out. Doing a preliminary mop, emptying and refilling the mop bucket with clean water twice, taking my shoes off each time before leaving the literal shit show and keeping people from trodding through the area. Though, after the fourth or so person, I was ready to let them go. Crap be damned. I had been dumping every single cleaning fluid we had into the mop water, pausing only once to wonder if it would be a possible issue and decided I really didn't care. The doors had been wide open this entire time and the smell had yet to dissipate. So I grab a bottle of pure acetone nail polish remover and dump it all over the floor, at which point it's immaculate. In fact, it was still noticeably less stained than when I left the job almost a year later. On my way home from an otherwise unremarkable shift, I stop at a convenience store and tell my horror story to the cashier, who I find out is studying psychology. As I turn to leave, I ask him what I've been dying to know all night. Is it weird that I really want chocolate pudding right now? And I can hear him laughing as I slip out the doors. On my first day in Iraq, I had to poo really badly. My CHU mate was complaining about getting his tough box under his bunk and blocking the door until I helped him. I get his box under his bed and start running to the toilet. As I'm running, a rocket comes and obliterates the area that I was running towards. It was a pretty harrowing sight. Safe to say, at that moment, I no longer needed to go. Many years ago, when I worked as an electrician in a hospital in Brooklyn, I was on the late shift, coming in at 11.30pm and leaving at 7am. Well, one night, one of the patients disrobed and started walking down the hallway and thought it would be a good idea to begin defecating on the floor. When security approached, he ran back the other way and tripped on his own feces, slipped and cry while on the ground and begin to play with said feces. It was definitely an unpleasant sight and an awful smell. I left early that shift. This adventure happened about 15 years ago. I'm from the US and was visiting Sonoma Valley, California with my then 13 year old daughter. This area is just beautiful. Rolling green hills, incredible varieties of the most magnificent flowers, lush varieties of leaves that together tumble onto the sidewalks. The homes are kept in pristine condition. They're quite modest, a little older, and you feel as though you're in a quaint European town. Every evening at around 6 p.m., a blanket of fog blows in and blankets the hills until mid-morning the following day. It is picturesque. It was the 4th of July. The neighborhood was being quite festive, so I thought that my daughter and I would roam the streets to take advantage of the fireworks that were being set off randomly. It was a lovely night after all. So we set off walking, ooing and ahhing with each 4th of July firework that illuminated the evening sky. Oh, what fun we were having. That's when my stomach started to rumble along with the fireworks. Have you ever been too far from home and any available bathroom when you knew that you had to go? I announced to my daughter, Honey, I have to poop. There was nowhere to go. At that moment, I felt like a dog searching for the best tree to poop under. I was trying so hard not to be seen by a homeowner or another pedestrian. I asked my daughter to cover for me, which she did. 
and I pooped under someone's tree. When I finished, I got up to inspect my work, and it looked as though a huge dog had just left it there, and the owner was simply too rude to pick it up. But I had nothing to remove it with. You have to understand that this is not a rural area. I pooped in someone's yard. This young teenager's mother just pooped in someone's front yard. The horror. I'm pretty sure no one saw me. What a thing to get away with. I was camping alone in northeastern Saskatchewan, and I swear I heard someone rip ass while I was sleeping. I heard nothing else though, so I rode it off as a weird dream and went back to sleep. But right as I was drifting off, a foghorn from hell sounds off in the brush about 15 meters away. At this point I'm crying and end up puking a little too. As I'm puking outside, a fart that sound-wise could only be described as the JFK assassination occurs a few meters from my face where I was puking. I managed to yell out for them to get lost, and I didn't hear anything else for the rest of the night, and I don't think I've smelt anything that bad since. I don't usually drink coffee. Last night I had two. Combined with the binge drinking from a few days ago, this led to some nasty diarrhea buildup on my train ride to my college town this morning. I'm kind of used to this situation. I'm a classic shipbreak and I don't want to leave my stuff unattended on the train, so I decided to try and hold it out. But I had not yet grasped how explosive this concoction would prove to be. In the bus from the train station to the dorm, the situation got more serious. At this point, I was doing some weird-ass butt yoga on the rearmost seat to try and make that feeling less unpleasant. When I finally got out, I almost made it to the dorm entrance before my colon started to go to town on my butthole. I managed to wrestle the poop snake down and again on my way up to my apartment, which I shared with a few other guys. I was shaking and groaning with every painful struggle against my rectum. As I reached my room, I eventually lost that struggle. I had never shat myself before in my grown life, and that feeling is sure to haunt me in my dreams for quite some time. I wadded up the toilet paper and dropped myself onto it, all the while marvelling at the good handful of hideously reeking dung in my dropped pants, complete with a few drops on the tiny floor tiles and a good smear on the plastic seat for good measure. That crap was hell to clean up, but unfortunately I didn't take a pick so there's no proof for you. I clean myself up as well as I can with the toilet paper and head to my room to get a towel and shower. Guess what happens? My female roommate leaves her room as I'm standing in the doorway to mine with the towel in my hand, my butt smeared with poo residue. Luckily, I'm just out of view and she's about to leave so I drop an awkward, hey, and she leaves the apartment. She's bound to have smelled the stool lying on the bathroom floor though. I just hope she assumed I'd done a really manly poo. I hop under the shower, use an ungodly amount of shampoo in an attempt to wash away the poo and shame, and clean up the bathroom some more to be perfectly sure. Despite my efforts, there was still the intense whiff on my butt, but I figured I was much cleaner than someone who had just taken a normal dump and wiped, so I tried to ignore it and get dressed. I also proceeded to wash those jeans, which luckily have only sustained minor injuries at a temperature way too high for them. The main victims of the incident went into a bag and eventually the trash. Fast forward a few hours, I come out of the gym, get on my bike and ride at home. All the movement seems to have loosened a fart. Yes, what do I do? Trust that fart. Well, I don't want to bore you with further details, but I caused a mild, heavy skid mark. Stunned by my own stupidity, I get home, plop myself on the toilet again, and it's not even poop anymore. It's just a lot of volatile gases and slime. Just yellow, sticky slime. I don't even want to know, Jesus Christ, I shower again even more meticulously. But there's still the odour. So here I am, a grown-ass man, 
shat himself twice, but it's no big deal, right? Today, my Aunt Jen took my brother Trey, my grandmum and I, to the beach for the day. I had an English muffin for breakfast and it made my stomach upset. I tried to go to the bathroom before we left, but it just wasn't working. The beach was probably an hour away, so I figured if I had to go, I would be able to make it. Wrong. I was wearing my favorite white bikini in the car when my stomach started to feel upset. It went away after a few minutes, so I thought I would be alright. Wrong. It came back about 15 minutes later. I needed to take a dump now. I told my aunt and she tried to get to an exit and after a few minutes I couldn't hold it. I pooped my pants. When I told my aunt, she tried to find the nearest bathroom. We eventually found a Burger King and my grandma took me into the bathroom so I could clean myself up. Luckily, she brought paper towels to the beach, so she was wetting them for me in the sink and passing them to me under the door. I wasn't thinking straight because I put the paper towels in the toilet. When I tried flushing them, they weren't going down. I then had to reach into this public toilet inside of Burger King with my bare hands to take them out and put them in the trash can that was also in the stall. After I was walking out of the stall, my grandma saw a few spots of poop that fell on the ground when I was taking my pants off. Then I had to wipe up the Burger King floor because I dropped poop on it. After we left, we had to find a shop near the boardwalk that sold bathing suits. We found a white bikini bottom that didn't exactly match my top, but it would do. We get to the counter, and it cost $50. My aunt ended up buying it for me, even at that ridiculous price. We get to the beach house my other family was staying at, and I run to the bathroom to change, and then went outside to put on a lot of sunscreen, so no one would notice I smelt like poo. My bathing suit bottoms were ruined because they were white, and are now sitting in a trash can in Burger King, along with my favorite pair of shorts. I hoped things would get better after that, but I was wrong. I forgot to bring underwear. My aunt lent me a blue thong with black lace. Talk about awkward. I'd never worn one because I thought they'd be uncomfortable, and I was right. Imagine sitting in a car with something constantly up your butt crack. Not cool. When I got home, I went to the bathroom, took it off, and threw it away and took a nice, long shower, and never told any other of my family members what happened to me. Me and my friend had just set up camp, and chilled for a little bit, not far from a pretty overgrown trail that seemed almost abandoned and forgotten. We were spooked by a noise, and it was a mountain biker coming down the steep and bad trail rather recklessly. We then heard and saw him stop, hastily pulled his shorts down and squatted down to spray diarrhea like crazy before he carried on going. We were pretty camouflaged, so he never saw us watching, but we saw the whole thing. This happened to me when I was finishing one of my last courses at school. It was the final exam and I had been prepping for it for months. I was quite nervous, and I'm not sure if it was nerves or the fact that I had eaten something dodgy that made my stomach quite upset the night before. I had to poop a bunch of times that morning, and when I got to the exam, I made sure I went just before. Partway through the exam, I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. My stomach is telling me that I need to go to the bathroom now, so they reluctantly let me out, stand in the nearby corridor, and when I'm out, escort me back to my exam. After another 20 minutes or so, my tummy is making the rumblies. I know that if I try and ask to leave, I will be reported and I could just fail the exam on principle because you're not supposed to get up and leave more than once. But it was getting dire. I was feeling awful. I thought perhaps I could alleviate it slightly by doing a little fart. So the moment I was going to fart, I do the loudest cough possible. And that's when I realized I had made a grave mistake in judgment. Because at that very moment, I sharted myself. 
I stick my hand in the air and insist that I need to go now. The invigilator was not pleased and she escorts me to the bathroom once again. At this point I inspect the damage and there is poo all over my boxers and also on my pants. I'm pretty sure there must have been some on that seat. I was absolutely ashamed of myself and I can feel a dot trickling down my leg. I do the best job I can to clean up. I'd taken about 10 minutes and had missed a fair portion of the exam at this point. After a while, I open the door, notice the invigilator isn't really paying attention to me but looking back at the exam hall and just leave. I couldn't face the disgrace of having to sit back on my seat that was probably covered in crap and leave it at that. I had been sick for the past few days. I had been home from work releasing my demons out of both ends and no longer felt like I was on the brink of death. But man, I still had diarrhea that hadn't gone. I could usually tell when it was coming and had time to get myself to the bathroom before creating an explosion. That's when I felt a fart coming on and it felt like one of those silent ones you can just squeeze out. I was sitting in my living room watching TV when I felt it come. I squeezed ever so slightly and opened the floodgates of my anus. I was in my underwear which promptly turned brown. It got on my couch, on my leg and I basically dove into the shower. I've just finished cleaning the couch, thankfully got nothing on the carpet which I would have had to explain to my girlfriend coming over shortly why there was weird brown stains on the floor. I was backpacking with my dog about 12 miles from the road and trailhead, so pretty far from people, though popular enough that other hikers may have been around, although we didn't see anyone all day. Around 2am, my dog started this really low growl that woke me up. I turn on my headlamp and see his teeth showing and he's right on top of me. That's when I hear heavy footsteps, black bear slash moose near the tent perhaps, I leash my dog so he doesn't tear through the tent and the footsteps move further back, but keep circling my tent. All of my food and toiletries are hung in a tree in a big bear bag, nothing in the tent to draw a bear's attention, so I clap my hands. Something is still slowly circling, not something a moose would do and a bear might if he wanted the food, but I've got nothing besides my really big dog with me. I decide to step out of the tent with the leash in one hand and bear spray in the other, yelling, hey, bear. The footsteps stop. My dog's nose is in the air telling me to look right, but nothing in my headlamp that I can see. I didn't hear anything run off, but it's quiet. I give it five or so minutes, get back in the tent and it starts up again, slowly circling maybe 50 feet from me. Maybe an hour later, I hear footsteps wander off into the woods. At dawn, I take the dog and bear spray and start looking around the tracks. I find the clear path in the leaves that had been trampled, but no tracks. The dog noses on the ground and I follow his lead, and he follows the loop around our campsite, and we finally find a few human footprints, not shoe tracks, a regular size, barefoot human foot, plus a human turd and toilet paper. Some guy was wandering around in the middle of nowhere near the tent and circling my tent for an hour or more and left me a turd to find. I was talking with a nice looking guy over Grinder. I recognized him from the neighborhood I worked in and I didn't have notifications turned on for the app. So I went a few days without checking it. He comes into my work and we have a fairly flirty conversation and he tells me he was surprised that I was interested after I didn't respond to the last thing he sent. I said I'll check it later and we make tentative plans for drinks that night. When I go to check my inbox, I see he sent me a video of him shitting explosive diarrhea on his table, whining that daddy likes it messy. It was the quickest block in my dating life now when he comes into the store, I flee to the back room. 
My girlfriend and I had just gotten a puppy. He was being crate trained at night, so when we went to bed, we would place him in this padded crate right by our bedside so that he could see that we were right there. Everything was fine, except one night, he had diarrhea all over the crate. I hear it happening, and just as I'm walking over to turn the light on, I see that he is lapping it up. Horrified, I yell no, and just as I'm running over to get him out of the crate, he starts vomiting and diarrheaing all over himself and me. It was a pretty crappy night. The next morning, I take him outside to the front yard so that he can do his thing. Now, mind you, he'd been ingesting poop and pooping out of both ends just hours earlier. I'm standing on the front lawn next to him, waiting for him to pee, and this couple are walking by, and they see him and say to me, Oh, what a cute puppy! When, as if on command, he lets out this loud belch, lifts his little tail, and farts a big wet one. The looks on their faces were priceless. I just want to share one of my favorite poop stories you've probably heard on my channel before, but in case you haven't, here you go. There was this girl who was going out with this guy, and she had been invited over to their house for dinner. It was a lovely time of bonding. She got to meet his parents, his siblings, and they were all sitting down having a very delicious meal in this house's conservatory. Now, the conservatory in question had glass windows from top to bottom. It's sort of like an extension to the house in the rear part, and there was glass everywhere, a lovely place to let the light in on sunny days. She excuses herself to go to the bathroom, which she knows is upstairs. She makes her way up, goes into the toilet, and drops a huge turd into the bowl. When she's flushing the evidence away, to her horror, it's too large for the bowl to handle. She flushes again, and again, but this monstrosity of a turd isn't going anywhere. She panics. She knows she's been gone a while, and everyone must have known that she'd done a poo. But the thing that was mortifying her was having to face the fact that the next person who used the toilet would damn well know she left this absolute abomination in their toilet and assume she didn't flush. In any case, it would be an awkward conversation. That's when she gets the genius idea to dispose of it in a creative way. She grabs some toilet paper and gently picks up her turd. She looks out the window and chucks it out gracefully. That's when she gets the idea to dispose of her turd in a creative way. She picks it up and looks out the window for where she can dispose of it. There underneath her, she sees a compost patch and is sure that she can get it in there and hopefully the family will assume it was just a dog or another creature that did the dirty there. She feels such relief and decides to ceremoniously toss her enormous turd out the window. Unfortunately for her, she doesn't look where it lands and proceeds to get rid of the toilet paper she was using on her hands to cushion the poo and wash her hands thoroughly. She flushes the toilet successfully with a smile on her face. She walks down knowing that she has got away with the perfect crime. She walks down the stairs and enters the conservatory with a smile. But at that moment, she noticed that everyone's eyes are not on her or the food, but up on the top of the conservatory window. That's when she decides to follow their gaze and looks up to see the enormous turd she had just cast down is now sliding down the conservatory roof. They all look at her, and at that moment, she turns around, grabs her coat from the side, and walks straight out the door, never to return or to speak to those people again. 
Hey guys, it's Mort here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's comedic stories. If you did, you can let me know down below. And if you have an embarrassing poop story that you'd like to share with the world, you can send it over to my email or drop it in our Reddit, and it will probably feature in next year's stories. But that's it from me. Huge thanks as always to my amazing members and patrons who get some exclusive perks, and if you want to know what those are, you can figure it out in the description. But until then, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.